Hello, uh, bonjour, uh, Toronto. Really excited to be here, and today uh, I will be talking about the Alio Advantage. Um, so just quickly, uh, my name is Anthony DePrinzio. I lead head of growth uh, at Alio, and uh, hopefully this presentation will give you some really great insights into the evolution of the Web3 industry and what we at Alio are doing uh, to move forward in that ultimate vision that we're all uh, trying to uh, push towards. So, to start, I thought it would be gr good to go through a quick history of the Web3 industry uh, so that you can get a better understanding of where we are today and where we're trying to head with Alio. So, to start, many of you are probably familiar that for years people have been trying to develop digital currencies, right? Just taking uh, stores of value and, and having them exist digitally. Uh, so you have projects such as DigiCash, HashCash, eGold, BitGold, et cetera. These are all failed projects, uh, but they made a lot of strides in terms of actually creating digital money. Then around 2008, you have the advent of Bitcoin, and I'm sure everybody here is familiar with Bitcoin, but the core thing to understand about Bitcoin is that the innovation was more crypto economic in nature. Um, and it also essentially enabled individuals to come to consensus and create this digital store of value. Um, and then from that, you got other projects such as Litecoin, BitShares, Zcash, et cetera. And then from that, you had Vitalik Buterin and others say like, hey, this crypto economic um, uh, incentives that we created, that were created through Bitcoin, is there a way to actually put a virtual machine on chain and do more kinds of complex applications and, and computation. And so that's where you get Ethereum and the concept of smart contracts uh, and these on-chain virtual machines. And from that, you have many other platforms such as Cosmos, Polkadot, Near. A lot of them are at this conference. And they've all made amazing innovations in the space. And so the next uh, path uh, is where Alio comes in, right? So we're basically trying to take all of the innovations of these previous platforms um, but adds something known as zero-knowledge execution. So if people aren't familiar, Alio leverages a technology called zero-knowledge. If you're not familiar, zero-knowledge is a way for you to prove some statement to somebody without having to reveal all the specific details about it. So a quick example would be if I want to go to a bar and I need to prove to a bouncer that, in the case of the United States where I'm from, I'm 21 years of age or older, Usually I have to give them an ID, but on that ID it has my address, my actual birthday, my full name, all this additional information that they don't need. All they need to know is that I'm 21. Uh, by using a zero knowledge proof, I can actually validate that yes, I am in fact 21, but I actually don't need to give you any of that, uh, that other underlying information, right? And you can do this through math and cryptography. I know that sounds a bit of magic, but we're trying to take that concept and apply it to these decentralized applications, right? So now you can get private and programmable uh, applications on the blockchain. And for us, zero-knowledge execution is a way to generate these proofs cryptographically uh, in an off-chain manner. And so just to reiterate that point, another way to visualize Alio is taking the programmability of Ethereum, right? So this idea of um, smart contracts and the privacy of something like Zcash, right? So Zcash was a great inspiration for us at Alio. Uh, if you're not familiar, Zcash was a project that took the core idea of Bitcoin as a digital store of value, but allowing it to be private. So this is really what we're enabling uh, with Alio. And some other key highlights to mention is that we have zero gas fees, or rather I should say you have the ability to have zero gas fees because you can run all of your computation off-chain, generate a zero-knowledge proof off-chain, and then put it on-chain for the validators in our system to verify. You can also have on-chain computation in shared state if you so choose, but that's totally up to you and it depends on the use case. Um, if you put anything on-chain, you do sacrifice privacy, so you just have to keep that in mind. And then because we have this off-chain computation, it allows for unlimited application runtime, right? Which allows for much more complex applications. So some of the core components of Alio are the following. So we have um, Leo, which is our zero knowledge domain specific language and compiler. So Leo is a programming language similar to something like TypeScript or Rust. Um, you know, typical programming languages a web developer would be familiar with. So the general idea there is if you're a developer that wants to deploy an application on Alio, it's very seamless. 
Uh, and now you don't actually have to write your own circuits. You don't need to understand cryptography. We've ab abstracted all of that away. So you can just jump right in and start building. Uh, then we have our own virtual machine. It's called Snark VM. It's a zero knowledge VM, not a zero knowledge EVM or ZK EVM. This is a ZK VM. We've designed our own from the ground up that's designed for privacy. And the reason for this is because other existing virtual machines don't have the opcodes or other primitives that actually support privacy uh, in these Web3 architectures. Um, and then we have Snark OS, which is our operating system um, and also works in conjunction with Snark VM for that proof generation. Uh, and I'll talk about validators and provers in the next slide, um, but these are the different actors interacting with these components. So to dive into that a little bit, the high level idea is you as a developer can write an application, deploy it, you have a prover on the network, which is another user or node that actually runs that computation using specialized hardware. And then you have validators on the network. These are nodes that actually verify that those zero knowledge proofs were generated correctly off chain, and then they upload them to the chain. Um, and that's what uh, you're able to, to view on this public ledger. So in that model, you can kind of see how we get privacy, right? Because on the chain, all you see are a bunch of zero knowledge proofs validating transactions legitimacy, but we don't know all the specific details of those transactions. And then just to do a comparison, if you're familiar with Ethereum, uh, the way you can do a comparison with Alio is that um, just like you have smart contract developers on Ethereum, you have application developers on Alio deploying programs. Um, again, we're using zero knowledge more for its privacy preserving properties, and this is where the provers come into play. Like I mentioned, they're generating these proofs. Um, in Ethereum, people are using ZK in the context of layer two scaling solutions such as rollups. Our solution does everything rollups effectively do, but the main differentiator is that we're getting privacy, whereas rollups are not focused on that. And then you have validators in our network, right? These are the individuals contributing to consensus, adding to the chain, same idea in Ethereum. Previously it was miners, obviously with a tradition, uh, transition to proof of stake, they're now validators as well. And so just high level, like really what we're doing here is we're taking this complex mathematic, mathematics and cryptography and converting it into something that your computer can reason about, right? So doing this uh, program evaluation. Um, and I put a little basic example here, but with our virtual machine, we're abstracting this complexity into something that you don't really need to worry about. And then just quickly going through the step-by-step -step process. So I deploy my transaction to an on-chain program registry, which is effectively a namespace. This allows you to see all the programs on the network that people can interact with. Then you have the provers. Again, they're executing these programs off-chain, and they're incentivized to do that through something called proofs of succinct work. Uh, it actually encourages people to create more efficient hardware by competing against each other, and this hardware hopefully will make proof generation faster. And then you have validators, right? So again, they're taking these proofs, adding them to the chain through our consensus mechanism, which is Bullshark and Narwhal. Other projects such as Aptos and Sue use this. It's a directed acyclic graph-based architecture. And so just quickly, with the time I have left, talking about some use cases. So ZeFi, or zero-knowledge DeFi, as I like to call it, is a really big one. So you can do things like zero-knowledge token swaps, verifiable oracles, cross-chain routing. Um, another interesting one, which is kind of DeFi-related, also identity, uh, validating somebody's creditworthiness, right? So they can trade on-chain derivatives, but we don't actually have to reveal all their personal information. And then some other use cases include gaming, um, privacy preserving machine learning, uh, zero knowledge authentication. Um, the gaming one's interesting because if I want to build a Web3 game that's decentralized and needs some way to do privacy, because most games are considered imperfect information games, Alio enables you to do that. Um, and then for zero knowledge auth, just to jump into that, imagine logging into a website without entering a username or password. Instead, you can log in with a zero knowledge proof. Uh, which gives you much more uh, privacy and security. And so how can you get involved in Alia, right? If any of this resonated with you, if you're a developer, if you're somebody that's interested in building, there's a few different ways. So the first is we have a uh, developer grants program for builders. So there's actually three tiers to that. One is launch grants. We give you $3,000. You have to build something open source. You have a month to do it. If you deploy your program, you get the money and you know, uh, there's not as many questions asked, and it's a good way to sort of learn our language and get involved. 
Um, if you're a security researcher or white hat hacker, we have a bug bounty program for our operating system and virtual machine. If you go to Hacker One, which maybe some of you are familiar with, you can find our bounties and compete. And then currently we have uh, deploy incentives for our test net. So that's actually ending on Monday, but if you're feeling ambitious, you can try to deploy an application and potentially win some rewards there. And here's some additional resources if you want to check us out. Uh, we are re doing a, a website relaunch before the end of the month, so all this information will be available at alio.org uh, in a more organized fashion. But for now, uh, definitely check out these resources. Our uh, playground, so play.leo-lang.org, uh, is really great if you want to experiment with Leo. And then also this GitHub repo at the bottom, uh, awesome Alio on our co-founder and CTO's uh, GitHub, is really valuable for looking at examples. So thanks so much for having me. Uh, if you're interested in Alio, we have a booth. We're happy to share more with you. Thanks again. Thank you, Anthony DiPrinzio of Alio.